Hello everyone, my name is Donnie and today we are reading A History of U.S. Volume C, Chapter 36, called Ida, Sam, and the Muckrackers. Here we go. On January 16, 1787, Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to his friend Edward Carrington. He said, The way to prevent errors of the people is to give them full information of their affairs through the channel of the public papers, and to contrive that those papers should penetrate the whole mass of people, of the people, the basis of our government being the opinion of the people, the f very first object should be to keep that right. And were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the letter, the latter. The First Amendment to the Constitution, also known as Article One of the Bill of Rights, says, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of press. Our free press, some people call it the fourth branch of our government, an unofficial but very important branch. Since early colonial times, Americans have been eager readers of newspapers and journals, but America's leaders have often become exasperated with that free press. No one likes to be criticized, and that is exactly what good journalists do. Sometimes the media can be irresponsible through libel laws usually control deliberate lying. You can sue a newspaper if it lies and if that lie harms you. A public figure must prove that new that the newspaper or TV program knew that it was saying was false and that it had a reckless disregard for the truth. Jefferson never changed his mind about the importance of the press. And Americans have always understood that if we are to solve our problems, we need information. A free press supplies that information. At the turn of the century, America had unusually difficult problems to solve. The country was experiencing astonishing growth, industrialization, and urbanization, an influx of many different peoples, and excessive government corruption. People needed to understand these phenome phenomena to be able to deal with them. To understand them, they had to have information. Just when they were needed, some remarkable writers and editors appeared. They looked at America critically, fearlessly, and honestly, and they explained what they saw. These writers were called muckrakers. Muck is dirt. Muckrakers were journalists who wrote about wrongs, about injustice, unfairness, and corruption. And here's a, a little thing down here about Nully Bly. I will let you read that on your own. They went to slaughterhouses where animals were killed and meat was processed, and they saw rats in dirt and described what they saw. They wrote about city bosses and how dishonest government cheated citizens of their rights and money. They wrote about the mighty industrial tycoons and how some of them broke the law and got away with it, and why that cost the public great sums of money. And they wrote that in a democracy... All of the wrongs can could be righted by the people, but only if the people are informed and take the time to vote. The muckrakers had several things in common. They wrote unusually well, they did care for research, and they cared, really cared, about making this country a better place to live. They developed a new kind of journalism, investigative journalism. Just at a time when publishing techniques made it possible to produce a good magazine, distribute, distribute it widely, and sell it for 10 cents. Everyone seemed to read the Muckrakers articles, and that made them very influential. They helped bring about change. Food inspection laws were passed. Antitrust laws were enforced. Reforming mayors were elected to office. Ida Tarbell was a muckraker, although she preferred to call herself a historian. Actually, she was both, and amazingly good at both callings. Next page. Of all of the muckrakers, Ida Tarbell was the most famous. When she was a little girl, she heard women reformers saying that if she wanted a career, she would have to give up the idea of marriage. Tarbell vowed never to marry but and she never did. 
Ida became a teacher, but she found she didn't want to cheat, teach, so she went off to Europe. She had a little money and a lot of adventurousness, and she could write. She believed she could write articles that would support her. That was what she was doing in France when the doorbell rang and Samuel Sidney McClure walked into her life. Sam McClure came from an Irish family that had immigrated to the United States. His mother worked as a maid and a washerwoman. Sam worked hard and made enough money to pay for college. After college, he wrote a biking magazine. Bicycling was the new rage at that time. And then he got a bright idea. He would start syndicate, pronounced syndicate, for writers. No one had ever done that before. He brought articles from very good writers and sold each article to several publications. The articles made more money than if they had sold to just one journal, and small papers and magazines were able to publish the best, best authors. By now, Sam McClure realized that what he really wanted to do was to be an editor. In 1892, he, brought, he borrowed money and founded Sam McClure's magazine. Not long after, he received an article from an unknown author. It was about paving the sheets of Paris. That was an unlikely topic, but... As soon as he started reading, he said, he said, he said to an associate, this girl can write. I want her to do some work for the magazine. So he went to Paris, met the author, Ida Tarbell, and established one of the most productive collaborations in the history of journalism. And right here is a picture of Ida Tarbell. And here is Sam McClure. Oh, okay, and that is it for chapter 36 called The Muck Creakers. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and thank you guys for watching.